Hey, what up, boys? Did I show up in time? Boy, you shouldn't have shown up at all! The titties! Exterminate! The time has come. We have plenty of worthy combatants ready to face off in Mortal Kombat 11. We already got Joker, as well as Spawn, as well as the T-800 Terminator himself. We also managed to get Shang Tsung, Sindel, and Nightwolf. But there can be more challenges, can there? And that is exactly what we're gonna do. Because frankly, I have nothing better to do in this quarter team. For this list, we're gonna go for characters that originated in Mortal Kombat only. So don't expect to see third party characters like Michael Myers or The Bride from Kill Bill. That is a story for another time. Hello, viewers of the tournament. Do you remember the time Bihan became Super Mario? A beautiful demon from the Netherrealm certainly did. Frankly, I feel like Serena didn't have a lot of attention in Mortal Kombat X. She only makes a cameo appearance saying how emotion freed her. She isn't a playable character, but she can do well in the cast. Tanya hasn't seen her spot on the roster since 2006, and now she's a playable DLC character for Mortal Kombat X. And all she did was assist Melina in throwing hands with Koto Khan. Rain was also there to help her, but that's a story for another time. Give her the hourglass and she will bring back the life to Jitaka and Kia. After all, she's been through absolute hell with Quan Chi after Shinnok attacked her hometown. And with Cabal's ending, Serena can add to the flirty interaction compilations I see often on YouTube. Her gameplay could involve her having a bit of Scorpion's characteristics and a dash of Kano as she can throw knives and such. There is a ton of potential here now. Oh boy, Cassie and Jackie have been transported to the game. So do the rest of the group will. <coughs> Damn it, it's only those two. Takeda and Kung Jin seem like they are left out in the fun, but if I had to choose a spot for Kung Jin, I'd say here. Frankly, he just kind of seems like a Kung Lao knockoff in terms of personality, which is why he's so low on this list. But at least with a new game, they could make him have uh, more character developments like with Johnny and Cassie. With Kung Lao coming from the past, you can see the surprise in Jin's face, and hell if Takeda and Jackie are a thing, then we can finally see Cassie and Jin finally being- I can't. They won't accept- They care only about what is in your heart, not whom your heart desires. Fuck! Fan fictions aside, Cassie's team just feels so empty without the other two. That's like playing Super Mario Bros. 2 and not having Peach and Toad playable. Sure, they aren't exactly two important characters, but it could help to have the rest of the squad. Aaron Black made his debut appearance in Mortal Kombat X, and now he is still playable despite not being involved at all in any of the stories. So let's bring in Jin and help him have a little bit of fun. If Kung Jin gets the hourglass, it's possible that he can go back in time and stop Kung Lao from dying at the hands of Shao Kahn. Or hell, he can even go back in time and kill Shao Kahn before he can kill Kung Lao. But then again, continuity-wise, that is an entirely different can of worms, and um, like a majority of MK endings, it won't be canon. Cyrax. Everybody's excited. And they actually have a right to be. Cyrax, like Tanya, Rain, and Baraka in Mortal Kombat X, is a fighter you go up against in the story mode. This guy has it very rough. In the original timeline, he was on the verge of death, but was lucky to meet Nitara. And she had a simple request. Go ahead and burn alive in the lava to help retrieve an orb that can separate her realm from Shao Kahn. Say, something is burning around here. In Armageddon, he is one of the many who die at the Battle of the Pyramid. Things didn't go entirely different in the reboot. He was and still is very damn hesitant to be turned into a cyborg, and now this happened. You are ordered to return to the Lin Kuei Temple for assimilation. 
Cyrex. I am Lin Kuei, Unit LK4D4. You will come with me. Kronika has not been kind to the poor guy, and she damn well knows it. And if that wasn't enough, when he was brought in Mortal Kombat 11, he was converted and had his behavior overwritten. He then just sacrifices himself to save the other Cyber Lin Kuei. But believe me, I would have put him higher on the list. But he was Triborg in Mortal Kombat X, so technically he was in the last game, just not as himself. But what would his ending be? That's actually pretty simple, okay? He just stops the Grandmaster from even thinking of this plan in the first place. But um, things wouldn't exactly go as his way, as it happens in some of the MK endings like Scorpion and Terminator. Speaking of which, you can imagine the interaction that he would have with the Terminator. You know what's a surefire sign that a character won't make it into a game? When this is what is said at the crypt! It is a real shame on what happened to Kenshi, but luckily we got a guy who can take up his mantle, Takeda Takahashi. This guy can declare vengeance against Shang Tsung and with Joker on the scene, maybe they can make Takeda the sort of red hood of Mortal Kombat, saying the special forces abandoned him and now he wields guns like an absolute badass. Um, cause no. With Takeda, the whole gang would be here. You can see a lot of friendly bros between the two, not to mention with Takeda and Jackie. You know that shit is canon since the last game. You can just imagine how well that went down when, um... Is this cause I'm dating Jackie? You are dating Jackie? I hope they taught you karate cause I'm about to beat oh, your ass! Oh, you just know shit went south when Jackie told Jax of this news. Regardless, just give Takeda some polished moves and he will do great. You could just imagine his confusion when he finds out several things. Kronika will have a hell of a time catching Takeda up to date. <laughs> We're gonna be here for a while. His training with the Shirai Ryu is especially helpful for him as he can do some sick combos with a combination of his definitely not lightsabers and his kick-ass whip thing. And Takeda's ending? That's a pretty difficult question. I mean, he would probably just bring back his mom and Kenshi, but other than that, he's a pretty grateful guy. I suppose he just wants... I mean, if he can't do that, he'll just have a happy life with Jackie. Just like Cyrax, Shiva only appeared in Mortal Kombat 11. That's about it. That's the only similarities that they have. You don't fight Shiva, but she's just there. So, you know where I'm going with this. After not seeing Goro or Kintaro around, we just need another Shokan. Unless they show that Shiva has some spouse that can take her spot, I will wait until Shiva is in Mortal Kombat 11. Sure, she is bottom tier in MK9, but that does not matter. She played an impressive role and is apparently so popular in the SNES, her ghost haunts that system. Ooh. However, Mortal Kombat 11 must have anyone with four arms, and Collector does not fill that spot. It's just not the same. Neither is Devora. If it's not a Shokan, it's not a Shokan. Shokan is Shokan. In fact, before Shiva was created, people wanted a playable Goro-like character. Bring Shiva in, and you can see the interactions between her and Shao Kahn or Sindel. In fact, trivia, um, Shiva was actually meant to be Sindel's protector. So imagine how that would go down. And, if you consider it, the Shokan and the Tarkatans did band together to help Kotokan. So I can only imagine the interactions that will go on with that. In fact, I have pre-created a scenario that is possibly happening in Outworld. And, uh, Katana Khan, uh, would you and the other council like to have anything to eat? The claw of our enemies! A bagel. No! Three bagels. Shiva's ending would be her and the Shokan overtaking Shao Kahn and assisting Koto Khan. Let's be honest, that's what a majority of the combatants want. Tell me, which Mortal Kombat character has the entire franchise shaking in the boots. Shinnok? Shang Tsung? Quan Chi? Maybe Blaze or Mortaro? Nope! 
It's the Dragon King Onaga, also known as the guy Shao Kahn Poison in order to become Kahn himself. Boy with that bite him in the ass. One of the strongest characters within the Mortal Kombat universe, Onaga would be very useful within the MK timeline. His quotes for everyone would be intimidating for them, not to mention several dragon references the cages can do. Dragon Tales, Natsu Dragneel, Hanzo and Genji, Shinron, American Dragon Jake Long, plus there could be a reference that he joined forces with the likes of Quan Chi, Shang Tsung, and Shao Kahn, plus Raiden when he struck a deal with Shao Kahn. That will be one of the awkward things Onaga will be asking Raiden, because let's be honest, Raiden, he hasn't had a good, good guy resume. Good, good guy resume? He just has some bad spots. This would be a very unique character, and if the height is a problem, they could just shrink him like Sakurai shrunk Ridley. He only appeared in the original timeline and not in the current timeline. Seeing this guy come to Mortal Kombat 11 would bring back a character that a lot of people forgot about. There's gonna be a ton of salt for Onaga should he come to Mortal Kombat 11. Plus, with Kotokan and Katana Khan, That'll be a very interesting release date to look forward to. However, we must also take note of this fatal blow. It will be gruesome and we will love it. But what would his ending be? Well, it is Onaga, so chances are he'll probably reign over the Elder Gods, maybe even taking up their seats, causing chaos everywhere, all under his name. Unless they give him a sort of a challenge, like a mortal versus god. Someone like a child who's tripped throughout the years. Attention all Earth Realmers! Do you remember the time that Fujin was involved in Mortal Kombat Mythologies? No? You didn't? Neither did Netherrealm! Fujin has only ever made his appearance in Mortal Kombat X as he fought alongside his brother Raiden. With the power of wind, he will do some impressive juggling techniques. Not to mention that axe he holds is fucking kick ass. With a similar job as Raiden, his battle against Kronika can be a unique thing if you ask me. Fujin has had a rise and fall and ironically he started out as a fall as I don't blame you for not knowing Fujin was involved in Mortal Kombat mythologies. Raiden's brother has made a cameo appearance in MK9 as part of Kratos' ending. And in fact, a hacker managed to find out that Fujin was originally planned for MK9. That is until Ed Boon debunked him. You can just imagine how awesome it would be for Fujin to blow the other combatants into exhaustion and wait for the next round. Went into the script. <clears throat> as I was saying, his ending is just pretty much the same as Raiden, but he goes for logic and love right off the bat. That's about it for Fujin. Rain was also there to help her, but that's a story for another time. Story time! The Edenian prince that we wanted to see playable in Mortal Kombat X after Tanya hasn't exactly had a good run. He was burned alive thanks to Tanya being a bitch to save her own ass. Regardless, there could be tons of references just waiting for him. Joker could reference how his daddy would be disappointed in joining Shao Kahn's court just because he didn't become the commander. Liu Kang or Katana could reference how Rain is Katana's ex-fiance from Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm. Hell, Spawn could scold Rain for what he did to the Edenian Resistance. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, back up, back up! What the fuck did I just say? Don't follow the script. No, 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 we're going back. Go back to the ex fiance thing. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Somebody show me evidence right now. I refuse to believe it until I see it for myself. And why are you acting like you owe him something? Many years ago, Rain and I were engaged. Well, that happened. That will be a hell of an awkward thing to talk to Katana about. Defenders of the realms aside, Rain has some intense moves up his sleeve. With his power of water, he can use his power to return Edenia and have everyone forgive him for what he has done. In fact, there's a possibility that he can become a full-fledged god. 
and when he faces off some ladies in Mortal Kombat, you just know how wet they will be once they- SON OF A- Sorry about that. I had to deal with something. So, where were we? Oh, right, Rain, his ending. Um, I got it. He makes himself known to the Elder Gods. The Elder Gods know he exists. That will be at the very least. At most, he will probably take over a seat in the Elder Gods' chairs, but then he does some corrupted shit and the Elder Gods try to Take a mount, Mace Windu style. So there's that. He has control of the Senate and the courts. He's too dangerous to be left alive. Have you ever had a younger brother that is just very much annoying? He's better at you at anything, anything at all, and he rubs it in your face. Makes you want to just punch him right in this jawline. Well, that was a case with Taven's younger brother, Dagon. This guy was the antagonist of the Mortal Kombat Armageddon Conquest, and in the new timeline, he was responsible for Su Chin's death. Dagon and his brother Taven were well known and even revealed in Takeda and Kenshi's ending. If they bring in Takeda, you sure as hell can bet your ass that bringing in Dagon in would be instrumental. And you know what would make it better? If Dagon came from a timeline where he defeated Blaze, then we can actually see how Dagon goes with Blaze's true power right on his- Wounded, Dagon followed Taven to the pyramid. As Taven battled Blaze, Dagon stabbed the fire elemental from behind with a sword I had left him. Thus through treachery did Dagon complete the quest. But before he could savor his victory, the pyramid shook and a recess opened, revealing the parents he had murdered, Delia and myself. We were in fact still alive. Our deaths feigned in an elaborate test created to reveal the true nature of our sons. It is clear that Taven possesses the virtue required to defend Adenia. He will take my place as defender. Dagon, however, will be punished severely for the suffering he has caused. Okay, you know what? You're in timeout! Get on top of the fridge! Get up there! This house is a fucking nightmare! If you bring him into Mortal Kombat 11, Dagon will not hesitate to kill Kronika, as he has not hesitated to kill Argus or Delia. In fact, with Blaze's power, especially Taven as he wants to be the better younger brother. Have you noticed a massive amount of clip cuts in this video? Scandoso. Yo, Diablo ga scandal. Motherfuck, 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 fuck, fuck, motherfuck, 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 fuck, fuck, motherfuck, 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 fuck, fuck, motherfuck, motherfuck, fuck, fuck, we're fucked. Shu Jinko, Curtis Stryker, Havoc, Blaze, Smoke, Sector. These characters kind of deserve to be on this list. And note, I said kinda. Shujinko has fought against several opponents and is pretty much a knockoff of Shang Tsung, but here's what would happen if Shang Tsung was a good guy. Stryker is the, one of those characters that I mentioned that doesn't get enough attention canonically from the fans, but with Cassie Cage, it's pretty much the same thing as they both use- Oh jeez, whatever will I do? Oh. Havoc is Chaos Incarnate as he loves Chaos and even praises water. Blaze is just a buff heat blast, changed my mind. Smoke is turned into a revenant, but can either return as a cyborg self or human self. Sector is like Cyrax. You only fight him in the story mode. Recently, at least like around this part of the video, I've been talking about Adenians, or specifically Argus's children. Rain and Dagon to be specific. So of course I gotta put in Taven! Armageddon may not exactly be game of the year with their dumb custom fatality gimmick, as well as the state Midway was in at the time, but you can't deny that once you get into conquest mode, you can see how Taven went through hell. His parents are dead thanks to Dagon, he managed to face off against a third of the MK roster. Hell, this motherfucker has the power of- 
Did you think I wouldn't put that in knowing Taven can do this? However, this guy just seems like his endings would just be him avenging the Elder Gods and facing off against Kronika, and his battle intro with Cetrion, I would pretty much doubt he would be willing to throw hands with an Elder God. This motherfucker is the same guy who was gullible enough to follow Shinnok's orders and help him. So, to be fair, he was stuck in a stalactite, so he would, really wouldn't know. Taven should be able to return to the Mortal Kombat series as a playable character. It's best if everyone on this list managed to make it to Mortal Kombat 11, even the honorable mentions. And need I remind you that Taven was in Takeda's and Kenshi's endings? Have Taven polished up with a right sense of justice for Adenia. Give us the boy that went above and beyond to secure his destiny, to honor the once beautiful land of Adenia. Give us Taven where he allows former Adenians, now outworlders, to come into the land and learn of their new ways. Give us a satisfying outcome for the man that has a heart of gold with the power of a true Mortal Kombat combatant. Once he has the hourglass, he can fix everything Dagon has destroyed and become the new god of Edenia. That was top 10 most wanted characters for Mortal Kombat 11. <coughs> Hold on. No. <laughs>